I've always been very interested in growing a wide variety of different things, but all of my experience so far has been focused on vegetables with a few herbs and fruit bushes and trees on the side. In addition, this Red Gardens project has prompted me over the years to reduce the range of different vegetables that I've been growing for a variety of different reasons. But I think that it's time that I started to diversify, to try new things, to experience other types of growing. I've always been interested in growing grains and other types of storable crops, uh, but I never felt that I had enough space to make it worthwhile. This year, I had the opportunity to grow some wheat as part of a broader project, and so I decided to go for it. A really good friend and a neighbour in our community is an excellent baker, producing wonderful breads from their wood-fired bakery. And through their network of contacts with other bakers and a few farmers, they were sent a load of wheat seed to experiment with growing. This batch was a diverse mix of different varieties of wheat and was seen as the start of a process of eventually developing a localized land race variety of wheat that was really well adapted to the context, the soils that we're growing in, and the diverse range of weather that we would experience during our growing seasons. I was given a portion of this wheat seed to experiment with. I could have gotten wheat from a variety of different sources in the past, but I haven't. I do find it interesting how being part of a larger project with more interesting aims and origins is what kickstarted me into really diversifying what I'm trying to grow. I have a spare piece of ground beside the existing polytunnel garden that I've been slowly working to establish as an additional growing space. The soil is reasonably well dug and relatively clear of weeds, and I thought that about half of this space would be an appropriate size bed for my first attempt at growing wheat. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough compost to spare for this additional growing space, and so I added some chicken manure pellets to help boost the fertility of the soil. I then broadcast sowed the wheat in the spring and raked the entire bed to help bury the seeds. I then covered the entire bed with a crop cover to prevent the birds from picking out all the seeds. I then pretty much left this crop alone, apart from watering it a few times during the drought, although it probably would have benefited from even more watering. It was so wonderful to watch this wheat grow, as it's such a different aesthetic experience to growing vegetables. It's so peaceful watching it flow in the wind. Wheat is such a fascinating plant, especially as the seed had started to form and the diversity of different varieties became really apparent. Growing wheat is relatively easy, but it seems that the harvesting and processing is the real tricky part of it. But because I was growing at such a small scale, this wasn't such a big issue. I cut the plants down with a sickle and originally started to bind them up into bundles or into sheaves, as this seemed to be what you were supposed to do. But then I realized that I had some empty space in another polytunnel, and so I simply laid the cut straw down onto a piece of ground cover fabric so that it could ripen fully and dry. A few weeks later, I tried a number of different methods to remove the grain from the straw. This was complicated by the diversity of varieties of wheat in the mix, as the seed heads were at a wide range of different heights along the straw. But I found that running the plants across a clean metal mesh of a large sieve that I had built was easiest and fastest. The grain and the chaff dropped into the large bin below, and I was able to easily scoop out any seed heads that did pass through and run them over the sieve again. I then winnowed the seed by repeatedly pouring from one bucket to another in the wind, with the heavier seed dropping into the bucket and the lighter chaff and pieces of straw blowing away. This wasn't a perfect system, especially with the gusty winds, but by doing it in the hen run meant that any seed that I did lose was quickly picked up and eaten by the hens. This was all quite labour intensive and it was hard to get the seed perfectly clean. I think a few of the wheat varieties in the mix may not let go of their seed so easily. But this was good enough for my purposes and for the scale of the batch that I grew. But I'd want to develop some more efficient processes if I was growing at a larger scale. In the end, I harvested 5.8 kilograms of wheat from the 20 square meter growing space, not counting what was lost in winnowing and a few bundles that I saved as they were just so beautiful. So I started out with 400 grams that I planted and ended up with 5.8 kilograms of seed. So each seed produced roughly 15 additional seeds. This works out to about 300 grams per square meter, which is substantially less than the yield that industrial farmers with highly refined varieties and processes would achieve in Ireland. Looking at this another way, this small plot of ground produced enough wheat to make about 10 loaves of bread after setting aside enough seed to replant next season. So with this kind of yields, if you wanted to produce one loaf of bread a week for an entire year, you would need about 100 square meters of growing space, or 200 square meters of growing space would produce enough wheat to be able to make about two loaves of bread a week for an entire year. 
From the perspective of scale, this seems reasonable, but the amount of work that it would take to produce this amount of grain would be quite substantial. Growing your own vegetables on a small scale can be really cost effective, but with grain it's much less so, as it's really hard to compete with the efficiency of large scale mechanized farms. But cost isn't the only factor, and there's a lot of different reasons to want to grow your own grain, if you've got the space and the time. So, I now have almost 6 kilograms of wheat seed, which is really cool. I'm going to give some of it to my baker friend to experiment with, and it'll be really interesting what kind of quality of flour this mix of wheat variety produces. I'm also going to bake a few batches of my own bread, which I'm really looking forward to, and the rest of the seed I'm going to set aside for replanting next year. Before planting, I will mix the seed that I grew this year in with the remains of the seed that I was originally given. This is part of the process of creating a diverse mix of varieties that will hopefully over many years of planting and seed saving produce a mix of wheat varieties that do quite well in this context and with the diversity of different weather conditions that we can get during our growing seasons. This is quite a different process than the work you do to save seed from an existing variety or even breeding a new refined variety and it'll be really interesting to see how it all evolves. For now, I need to decide how much I'm going to grow next year, how much space in the gardens I'm going to set aside for growing wheat. Part of this is uh, making sure that I have enough space to dry the grain, especially if we have a wet summer, and the amount of work that it will take to thresh and clean all of this grain for use. And then I should really start baking more of my own bread. Every time I make a video, there's always a number of things that I leave out. Most of the time, this is just to make the video a little bit shorter. But sometimes the topic is a little bit outside of the realm of what I'm really trying to focus on and would be better to leave to another video. One of the key issues that I left out of this video was the fact that I buried old stale bread in trenches in the soil underneath where this wheat crop had grown. This is an interesting example of trench composting and it is something that I want to make a video about in the near future. So if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss that. And I'd really appreciate it if you'd also check out my Patreon page linked here or in the description below. As this is the main way that I'm able to fund this Red Gardens project that I'm working on and to continue to make videos like this in the future. But most importantly, thanks for watching.